Hey guys, um, welcome back to this next video on uh, the medieval castle blockout. So I just thought it would be good, a good idea to compress the live streams down uh, for at least what we do in 3ds Max uh, to build the actual model kit um, into a much shorter format uh, and kind of sort of narrate over the top, explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how it's going to get used. Um, so this is essentially a video uh, on the block out of our next uh, 3D modular environment kit, which is the medieval uh, castle. Um, now we we are going to be um, putting this uh, block out uh, kit into the current detailed medieval village um, kit, which is already on the Unity Asset Store. If you haven't seen it already, there's a, a link below. You can check it out there. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go over the, um, the prefab building uh, and uh, in sort of importing and building up the collision and, and building the prefabs um, ready for pushing um, in our next video. Uh, so that'll be Unity focused. This will be uh, 3ds Max focused. Um, <clears throat> so. If you haven't subscribed, if, you, if you've been enjoying the content, if you've seen some of our videos, um, it would help a lot um, if you hit that little red button uh, just below the video um, and that will get you notified whenever we release a new video or um, sort of go, go, uh, go live with a new live stream. Um, and yeah, it would, just, it would help us a lot. Um, we're trying to hit our sort of first thousand subscriber uh, goal. Uh, so. We're kind of a quarter of the way there. We're getting there, as of when I'm recording this. Um, we're we're most of the way through, pretty much there with the block out now. Um, we're going to be releasing, hopefully, releasing the detailed uh, version, the detailed medieval castle in April. The polystar one will follow. I don't think it will be too long afterwards. Probably a couple of weeks. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, let's let's get this rolling. Um, so I've already done a bit of work. Um, as you can see, this is sort of a, a speed overview. Um, you can see there some of the uh, the um, destroyed modules. Um, we, we started building up walls, um, individual items uh, that we can build some basic uh, sort of proof of concept buildings. So that was the goal. So come up with a, a small set that we can build some proof of concept buildings. So I identified uh, turrets, portcullis, and ramparts. So we came up with that set, well I came up with that set in order to build those first. And then sort of as ideas of what we could use, add on to the pack uh, come up, well then we'll just build them on the fly. The idea is we build those, we work out what we, we need and don't have, and we build that. We work out what we could do more of or more variations of, and we do that. We work out what we're not using and we cull that. Um, so as you can see here, we've got modules for one of the octagonal turrets. Um, I'm not sure whether we've got flat, have we got the, yeah, so, so I'm just building flat wall versions of those at the moment. As you can see, we've got sort of mullions and, um, uh, sort of other rampart features um, already there. Uh, I'm not being too concerned. Oh, here we go. We've got the. Um, I use Pinterest a lot. So, Pinterest is what I use to build up um, a mood board uh, or multiple mood boards for just to give me some idea of like the large scale forms, the material detailing, sort of some of the fixtures and the way the architecture is generally put together, uh, and just general mood inspiration. Um, and I, I'm, within the video, I'm constantly referencing that. Um, whilst I'm building this, I'm, I'm having to think about how the modules are going to fit together. So it's mostly, it's mostly corner pieces and flat pieces and the variations of those. Um, you've got essentially flat walls, corner walls, and then individual items that get stuck on. Um, and other, you've got steps and windows and and then everything else is kind of a variation on that so you know cutting out doors cutting out windows um, uh, sort of you know oh, oh actually we need uh, so sort of ground pieces as well so we'll have ground tiles as well um, 
Yeah, so <clears throat> we do iterate quite a bit on this. Um, we start off with trying to understand what the scale is. So uh, we've got a two by two, uh, well, a two meter tall box in there, and that's going to be our character scale reference. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of room for the character to run around and jump about and the camera, especially for a third person camera. So we've made sure um, that the wall scales are, so the, the standard wall piece is 4.5 units, meters tall, uh, by I think four wide. Uh, and we've got, we've got, I think, 0 0.5 meters thick. So that's important because we, um, to standardize everything so that it all fits together nicely and, you know, we can essentially snap it all together. Um, because if everything's a random size, it's going to be so difficult. It's not really a puzzle. Um, if things don't fit together uh, to build up, you know, the final thing. Um, so, what you can see, what you'll see me doing quite a bit of is is sort of testing whether um, ideas, that, what I have, the ideas that I have for individual modules are actually working um, on new buildings. So. Um, I'll kind of take a wall piece or a corner piece, like the uh, the primitive essentially, and then I'll work it up, and then I'll see whether it, it works from a style point of view, or see whether it works functionally. If it doesn't, then I adapt it, and then I see if it works again. If it doesn't, I adapt it. I just keep iterating until it, it, it does work together. <clears throat> so I guess the best way to explain um, the starting point would be get your primitive sorted, the absolute minimum detailed assets in order to build up the large macro forms of your of your environment. So for a castle, for if you've got a portcullis for example, you need the walls, you need a roof, and you need the rampart, the rampart bits, not the portcullis, yeah. a rampart, you need the walls, you need the, the roof. Now that could just be a roof or that could be preferably something that someone is going to be walking along, you know, firing arrows and such. So you uh, once you know these things, you know how the, sort of the general um, the general functionality of it, the general aesthetics of it, the forms, the large, you know, very wide, very um, very large sort of concept. Do that. Make sure they fit together, and then and then work into detail. Do variations. Um, you'll end up getting to a point where it's very fine grain. So, just to reiterate, step one, mood board. Step two, identify the core buildings that you need to build, um, and then just trust that you can build variations uh, of different buildings based on those, um, and probably design them in. Um, three, um, I, did I skip two? Well, anyway, three, um, build, uh, understand your scale, uh, and build the modules <clears throat> to the, the very basic level. Uh, so, you know, a wall would be literally just be a cube, um, a floor would literally just be a cube, a corner piece, probably a corner cube, you know. Um, and then understand the general sort of rules for fitting them together. So, for example, if you have a wall piece and you know you're going to have an interior wall, um, it needs to butt up against it. If you've got a hole for a window, make sure the interior wall piece, if, you, if you're doing a unique wall piece, then it fits, it matches, and it, it matches up. Um, Likewise, if you're doing a corner for a wall, then make sure that the uh, corner is, is either sort of divisions or multiples of the scale, so, so of, of that original wall. So for example, a wall would be, our walls are four, point, well, four wide, four meters wide. So, so I've made sure that, I think some, I originally made some of the corners for, uh, four wide um, as well. Um, so that's, so that, yeah, just get all of those sorted first. Now, here in the video I'm building up the portcullis. Um, again, this is just, you know, having a look and iterating um, on on the, the general large form is essentially this vertical column. And I'm just building up different variations of this, um, knowing that they, already knowing that they're gonna snap together. Um, and yeah, just flicking back to Pinterest again, 
uh, it's Warwick Castle. So I, I grew up in Warwick. Um, we've got a big castle. Um, I think it was made in the 1500s. Uh, but yeah, it, that that was a, <laughs> a good inspiration for me um, for this pack. So so yeah, step. What are we on? Step four? Step five? No. Let's, let's go with step five. Step five. Um, <clears throat> Pretty much what I'm doing now. Once you have the the large scale forms, um, you don't really necessarily. Have, oh yeah, Max crashed. There we go. You don't really necessarily need the uh, need to understand how you're going to do the high detail one. You don't even need need to know how you're going to kit bash it, because you you do you can do all that afterwards. Um, just so long as you get the each model for the kit made and variations of those, that's fine. Um, Oh yeah, here we've got the uh, the the polystyle medieval village. So we'll be doing a polystyle medieval uh, castle as well. So the polystyle version of the of the medieval castle. This is sort of close to the polystyle. It's still very far away from the level that we will have it. Um, like the topology is rough. Uh, there's no UVs. We're not going to color pick anything. Um, it's definitely going to the, the poly style version is definitely going to be far superior to the uh, the block the the block out. So uh, the block out was really meant for like a level design tool until the detailed version and the poly style versions are ready. So oh yeah, here's a here's a, I, um, an example of the block out medieval village that that I did ori originally before sculpting the module pack. One step I missed out um, was getting it, getting the block out pack into Unity uh, and building the prefabs. I wish I'd done that. I'm doing it on the medieval castle, uh, and you'll see that in the next video. Um, so yeah, step six. Um, once you have your forms, once you've done a few variations, you kind of really understand how everything fits together. Um, you can st start prototyping buildings. Um, you'll most likely find that things don't fit exactly and so you need to come up with um, objects that are reusable, heavily reusable, that will allow you to then take sections which don't necessarily fit too well together um, and use those as the blending pieces. So we use, I think what, what I've noticed we use quite a lot is columns. Columns help. When things don't quite snap together correctly, you can use a column because um, then you have a little, you have some overlap um, that can go upwards, that can go down. Uh, I think uh, that it definitely helps with interiors as well. When you're trying to marry an interior up to an exterior, um, columns help. Um, so yeah, we use we use I use three D Studio Max here. It's just because I'm, I'm used to using it. I'm sure you, a lot of you guys might use Blender or uh, uh, Maya, um, Maya, however you want to pronounce it. Um, to be honest, the skills are transferable. Uh, this is mostly sort of high concept rather than um, looking at individual modeling techniques. I think the general gist is work macro to micro and constantly iterate. Um, so what I've, what I've noticed um, is that I'm, I'm starting to do here in the video um, I've got whenever I need to make a new sort of tower geometry um, in the horizontal axis let's say it's got a different profile I can take one of the straight pieces and I can just kind of use that to snake along the uh, the profile of it and then I have I can then kind of stack those upwards so for example this turret for the portcullis uh, I need I need something quite small compared to one of the larger turrets that you can walk in. Um, however, they have different angled walls, so um, I'd need to, I needed to take some of the uh, some of the borders. I don't really know what to call them. Some of the borders uh, and use symmetry. Um, you'll probably see me use symmetry a lot to just kind of start bending them into the right shape. Um, uh, again, it's maybe a bit rough, but so long as they snap together, it's fine. Because what I'll do is I'll take this piece and go, oh, okay, I need to make this. I'll, I'll basically I'll group everything and list everything after the fact um, and work out how I'm going to kitbash them from the smallest amount of sculpt assets later. 
So I'm really not worrying about that. It's kind of like throwing the clay at the wall sort of uh, part of the process. Um, see what sticks. So the windows, um, the windows in this pack, uh, oh, there's my phone, uh, the windows in this pack, um, I want to make sure you have the option to either look straight through into a building or not. Um, some people may not want to have interiors for their, for their castle, you probably might, you most likely will, um, but I think depending on people's requirements for streaming, um, you might want to close a window up if you want to unload an interior, but you know, it, it, it's, I want to make sure that this has, has the options there. Um, so once the, once the, I think I did a rampart, and I think I, I did a tower, and then I did a portcullis. And I think once these were done, um, when, once the individual buildings are done, oh, here I go again, Pinterest. Yeah, I did a little mood board. Um, I think now I'm just looking at portcullis doors and drawbridges and the mechanism and, and how that would work. You'll probably want to do that at some point, you know. If, if something's heavily functional, like a drawbridge then you want to have a look and see what the mechanism is, mechanism is like and if you can imagine a player is going to go inside then you, you're going to want to uh, make sure that you have enough space internally um, and you have enough infrastructure there to house whatever mechanism you want to show later um, so that's I think what I'm doing here um, yes yeah, so once I did the those three main buildings um, you'll see later that I'm gonna to want to try and fix them together um, and it doesn't, it won't, just because something doesn't work immediately doesn't mean it's wrong. So um, sometimes when I put the turrets um, to the portcullis, uh, there's some gaps, or if I marry up the turret, the port, the ramp, sorry, the rampart to the turret, if I marry up the rampart to the portcullis, sometimes again there's gaps. Um, and then when you when you come to doing interiors and staircases and such, you will just naturally it will just become apparent what objects you need because you'll go, oh, I need a cube or some, some object that's roughly shaped like a cube or an object that's roughly shaped like a column or an object, another wall piece that's cropped or something. That will that will just become apparent to you, and then you'll build it, and then it's there as part of your kit. And then eventually, if you, you know, you, you've seen that you're not using one of them, then you just delete it. That's fine. Um, that, that's absolutely fine at this point. So, yeah, here I'm just looking at the infrastructure for uh, supporting the drawbridge. Um, but I think we're, we're pretty far through into, at least me being confident that the block out is working. Um, you see that little blue, blue cube? Yeah, the character reference, always using that uh, as a scale guide. Uh, you have to. Um, it's paramount. If you're using this in a game, scale is is very important. Um, and I think always sort of identify what your general sort of character scale is going to be uh, for the for the widest use case, and then stick to that. Um, I like to color code things uh, by. I think in this, I tend to use saturation. Um, to kind of identify pieces that are placeholder. So the, the for bright blue character, I normally throw in there as placeholder just so I don't get confused. I do the same in Unity as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I do add a little bit of detail to the block out, but that's more for a visual aid for me, just so I'm confident that the aesthetics in the long term are gonna look okay. Um, I enjoy doing it as well. <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, I think it's good to, uh, be confident with um, the visual sort of the visual fidelity um, of, of the out the end output. So I think when I was doing the if you see the little stones that are on the border of the of some of the walls and some of the turrets, um, I've, I've gone and I've cut cut into them a bit. But that's just to kind of show me where I'm go <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be, be sculpting them and how how I'm gonna be using the uh, the multi mesh brushes. Um, I'm, I'm building a horse right now, <laughs> so I think someone on the stream was like, "Would it fit a horse?" I was like, "That will fit a horse. Look, I'll show you." And so I built a horse. Scale reference. Obviously, it doesn't look anything like a horse, um, 
but yeah, I went online and had a look and saw how tall a horse was and you know, compared to a character. Anyway, that shows that you can fit a horse in there. Um, however, I would probably say that this is the smallest uh, that you would go for a portcullis, maybe. Maybe you could go smaller for gates and such, but for a portcullis, it's probably the smallest. Um, I think it's good to build the smallest version of your buildings because you can always go bigger. Easy. It's much easier to go bigger than it is to go smaller. Um, so that's what we're doing as well. Um, again, sort of a, redu a reductionist point of view. Um, so oh, here we go, sort of looking at the the different packs. If you if you um, if you're on Art Station, then we're on Art Station as well. So it's Astrofish Games. Uh, there you can just see sort of essentially it's just we put all the screenshots and videos for all the packs up there. I might put the development shots as well. Um, so yeah, so let me see where are we? I think I did a few destroyed versions or or some of the portcullis pieces with some dis like walls destroyed and such. I I started to do that in Unity as well, but um, I need to do some proper prefabs of those. I think. Yeah, so what windows have we got? Again, from a sort of form follows function uh, mindset, we've got a we've got a cross shaped window, which tends to be quite common. In medieval castles, essentially, you're using it for cover whilst you fire arrows at the enemy. Um, we've got what else have we got? We've got very small sort of square shaped windows you can chuck stuff out of. Um, and then you've got regular large shape windows for, for normal windows. Um, later on I'll be doing some uh, more ornate looking, so arched windows, but that's more for the buildings on the interior of the castle. So essentially the ramparts and the turrets and the portcullis, and they're like fortif fortifications um, and defences. And then everything inside a little less fortified because you know essentially you don't want the enemy getting anywhere past your ramparts or you know your your towers and your portcullis you certainly don't want that and so if they're if they're already past those points it's kind of already too late um, so yes yeah, steps what I found is steps are probably the most fiddly in interiors um, sort of it's fine to make a single floored room that's easy but as soon as you want to have enough room for steps for a character to run up that's when it starts to becoming to become tricky so um, I think steps are probably the things that have cut up the most other than walls. Um, definitely steps. So what I'm doing now uh, is just working out how wide the, the turret wall needs to be. Again, using scale reference uh, and using some of the other um, buildings as a guide as well. So I know that the turret, for example, has to fit the port, uh, the um, the rampart. Um, uh, for some reason, I'm going. Okay, yeah, here's the detailed medieval village again. So this is that's the end result. That's what it's going to sort of the the style it's going to be. Um, yeah. So I know that the the turret needs to fit the rampart, and so the rampart needs to be a certain width in order to fit nicely on onto the onto the turret, but also leave enough space for a character to run about on. So I needed to kind of understand the standardized scale, and it tend, luckily it was about, it was similar to the wall piece, it was about four by four meters. But that makes sense considering the wall pieces are four by four meters, and so that's why it fits nicely together. Um, I think I just wanted to make sure that I had an example of a staircase built so that I didn't uh, miss any uh, assets or any parts of the kit that we need. So here, for example, I've just built uh, a um, a wall barrier and thing. <laughs> um, what do you call it? Um, and then just to make sure that I have sort of the minimum number of pieces required to fit the general um, geometry of the walls. Um, again, you know using saturation, we've got the blue saturated material just to differentiate placeholder or well, things that aren't part of the kit are bright or sort of bright blue. Um, so that, that blue box there, that's 
um, the shape of a door. Um, so that's the scale of a single door for the character. It's bigger than the character. Um, so it's like, I think it's about 2.5 meters tall. Maybe, yeah, uh, 2.5 wide by maybe three meters tall. Um, plenty of room for the character to run through. And so if you want to run into a, a turret, then you can do that. And that's, that's you know, great. It's going to be the smallest door that, that you have. And so anything bigger than that, you know, the character's going to fit. It's fine. Um, I think also understanding where I'm going to place doors and where the critical paths will be for characters to move in and in, out and around buildings uh, gives me more insight into what assets I need. So right now I'm looking at the corner of this turret and thinking I need a piece which has a door cut out and I'll do that later. I'll either do that now or do that later. But, um, but yeah, building the stairs infrastructure kind of shows you where the access points are, where, where some preferred access points are. Um, so essentially, where are we? Step seven? <laughs> when, when you've got um, a few example buildings done, um, once the aesthetics are the way you kind of want them to be, um, and when, when you're in the process of knitting the buildings together, you need to start thinking about locomotion, character locomotion, how the character is going to get around these buildings. So I'm looking at just from an outside, external point of view uh, right now. Um, and I think after that, I'll look in, look at, in, uh, well, maybe an internal. I think I'll look at the internals of the turret because I know the turret's going to be the most tricky. Um, like square rooms, not so much, but the ramparts, not so much. Um, but yeah, the turrets are going to be tricky because you've got circular staircases. So I think what I did, I haven't done it yet, no. not. Not by looking at it. So what I do is is build some um, circular staircases, um, and they actually fit quite nicely in the turrets. You can get around relatively easily um, with, with quite a lot of space. Um, and it's actually quite fun to run around. Uh, looking looking back, um, I had a look at the, the. There are some aesthetic thing the pieces that you will not need. So those arches, for example, although you don't need them for the character they definitely provide accent to the general design of the castle. So if you go and look at the mood board and you go, oh, okay, these, these you see everywhere, um, they're not necessarily fundamental to the, to the functionality of the design. However, they definitely, they definitely define it as being a castle, seeing those sort of arches. So I think I was looking, what was I looking for? I was, I'm not entirely sure what I was looking for on Pinterest, but uh, I'm looking for everything all the time. I'm probably having a look at the portcullis and seeing how that's constructed. I think now I'm looking at the back of the portcullis and trying to understand how the character is going to be able to run through. So making sure that there is enough space. Um, this will get tricky. So um, getting the character, once I get up to the top of the rampart, or the portcullis even, it's going to be tricky to build um, stairs and platforms that will fit the character how uh, appropriately um, using with this with, with this current scale. So I'll end up having to build a few pieces in order to support that. But once they're done, I know I can reuse them elsewhere. So I think I do end up doing uh, creating some some wooden platforms. Um, because I just wanted the character to be tall enough to kind of peek their head over the top of that portcullis wall if they needed to, you know, shoot arrows or chuck some hot oil or something, um, or just you know, holler at their mates. Um, one one of the things I found using more or wanting more of in the current kit actually are these sorts of borders, um, especially ones for in, internals. Uh, so we've we've got. Buttresses, I think Buttress, buttress is probably the right word. <laughs> it's a funny word, but it's the right word. Um, <clears throat> so I need to make more buttresses. Um, I need to make more sort of ceiling supports as well. Still. There we go, using the scale reference again. Just pop the character. Whenever you're making a new area with, with a block out, just grab your character, just, just make sure it's always there. Um, yeah, we, we've got long form videos, long long form versions of of all of the of of the stream, the sped up stream that you're watching right now. I think this must have been so. This is a thousand times faster 
So uh, we've got a good five, uh, how many hours? 10, 20 hours maybe? Something like that. Um, a video uh, condensed down into this 40, well, 45, 46 minutes. Um, so if you want to go and listen to the long form ones, you can do that on our YouTube channel, um, which you're on. It's like great stuff. Um, again, if you hit subscribe, we'll, uh, we'll be, um, you'll be notified whenever we go live, or when, whenever I go live, <laughs> and whenever I release another video like this. So um, pretty soon I'll be, I'll be doing what I've done with this video for the Unity blockout, like I mentioned earlier. I think after that, the live streams are essentially going to be looking at uh, doing the ZBrush module uh, composition. So taking the block out assets and working them up in high detail. That's going to be fun to watch, I think. Um, hmm, it depends. I mean, watching hours of it, I don't know. Um, I think it's it's more interesting watching level design than it is watching individual module design You know, and sculpting. Well, you know, each to their own. But I think it would be a good opportunity to kind of explain the process and show the tools we use. Okay, so right now uh, I need I, I know that we've got sort of um, some straight wall pieces that we need to marry up against the portcullis turrets so that they fit the ramparts. The ramparts already fit the turret, but the portcullis doesn't necessarily fit the rampart. And there's gaps, so I need something to fill those gaps, which is what I'm doing here. So I know eventually these are these are what I'm going to need in the kit, and though I will use those elsewhere. Um, as well. What do we got? Okay, so I, I was coming to the uh, towards the end of the video here. Um, just making some straight pieces of this. I think this is going to go onto one of the flat, flat pieces, flat walls. Yeah, as, as I said earlier, I use symmetry a lot. <laughs> um, it's great for making curved pieces of flat pieces you already have. Um, yeah, so on, on my Pinterest board, I'll link the Pinterest board as well um, below. Um, so have a look at that. Uh, I've got a Lego, I made a Lego Pinterest board. Not It's not great necessarily for the small details, but for block outs, Lego is great, because especially if you're approaching a theme, like a medieval theme, most likely people have already done it. Um, and you can get some really great ideas for your large forms, um, general sort of style, sort of large, uh, large uh, scale, not large scale, but like high concept type stuff. I'm still working on trying to get that. Uh, portcullis to work. Yeah, I think I end up making a sort of a capstone just to kind of again fill in the gaps. Uh, similar to what, well, just like I was talking about earlier, um, I needed something appropriate to fill that gap. It's roughly sort of box shaped um, and that's these little pieces uh, are probably the best candidates for putting ornate little details in so if you see if you see any like quirky little details um, on reference photos you're like oh, I'd love to add that in save it for the filler objects Yeah, I end up cutting these down quite a bit. Um, eh, not quite a bit. A couple of variations of those sloped walls. You will sort of end up doing that for probably any wall that is used to kind of contain something else. If that something else has multiple variations or configurations, then uh, you'll probably end up making. Oh, there we go. There's the character. 
yeah, it definitely fits. I'm just I'm just checking to see, to make sure that the characters fit through through each of the doors uh, and and what the characters route might look like. Anyway, so yeah, going back to what I was saying, so um, you will probably end up with you know multiple variations of the thing that supports multiple configurations. The kit's, I mean, the kit is still, it's not massive, but we're able to create sort of quite a complex um, environment still using these sort of basic assets. It's grown considerably um, since building this. Um, I mean, I thought, okay, I have everything I need by the end of the block out in Max, but as soon as I imported it into Unity and started building functional assets, especially ones with interiors, it didn't balloon, but um, I definitely found that I, there's lots of edge cases that needed so, some sort of um, general uh, solution for. When I say solution, I mean assets or module. I think once you know how the, the kit is put together as well, so once I know how this castle's put together, there's no reason why you couldn't skin up a completely different castle using the same block out kit. So, um, yeah, no reason at all. And I, th I think that might be something that would be worth doing. Um, so, like, you've got, uh, like, an alliance uh, medieval castle, and then maybe you've got, like, a horde, you know, just a reference world of Warcraft, as an example. Um, and you could have, you know, different, um, yeah, very visually different um, castles. I think that might be that may quite fun might be quite fun to do. It means you don't have to reinvent the wheel with the kit. Yeah, so I'm gonna end up mirroring stuff now just to make sure that I can kind of come up with a decent composition. The composition works. Make sure there's enough room inside. Here I am sort of just flying around the character's main sort of path just to make sure it works. If you've got any questions about the kit, uh, if you've got any questions about sort of general environment art approaches um, or how we do anything, then then you can join us on our Discord. Uh, I'm there most days, so you can chat to me on there, uh, or sort of you know any other anyone else in the uh, in the community as well. Um, it's a really nice little group. Um, you can find the invite link to uh, our Discord channel in the about section of the YouTube. Uh, of our YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, hit me up if you want to chat. Still working on that port colors. <laughs> I think these little really tricky bits are important to spend some time getting right because when, when you have them right, more likely than not, those tricky bits will be consistent with other tricky bits that you will come in contact with. <laughs> um, they're normally there for a reason. They're, they're, they're sort of an emergent issue. Not, okay, not issue, but they're an emergent um, tricky bit uh, that will end up reoccurring quite a lot so if you've got mo if you've built modules that support that then you'll then you're sort of removing a good chunk of the edge cases Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you've got any questions, then yeah, fire them through either in the comments below or on our Discord channel. Uh, 
and um, yeah, the next video will be coming on shortly, probably next week, uh, just going over the Unity prefab building. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for joining us, and if you've enjoyed the video, uh, if you enjoy any of the other content on our stream, please uh, consider hitting the subscribe button, it will help a lot. Um, and uh, definitely check out the Medieval Village, uh, either the Detailed or the Polystar, both of both the, the um, kits are in the links below in the video. Uh, and there is a free demo of the Detailed Medieval Village kit on Unity as well, so have a look for that. Um, but yeah, take it easy. Alright guys, see you in a bit.